Let's go ahead and talk about the for loop. For this example, I've also included the array from the standard library. We're going to say int max equals zero. Let's go ahead and queue info. going to see in to our max and then we're just going to do a little bit of information checking here whoops forgot to double chevron there we go if max less than or equal zero q fatal let's go ahead and shut our program down Please enter a valid number. Nothing major here, but let's take a look at the for statement. So here's our for loop. What we have here is we have four parentheses, so we know we're evaluating something and a block of code. The for evaluation actually has three parts, and this gets a little confusing if you're new to programming. Int i equals zero, and then semicolon. Remember that. In C++, semicolon denotes that we're stopping. For example, we could take this and actually do that. That's a valid C++ command. It ignores the white space. It's just going to read right up until it gets to this semicolon. So because of that, understand, whenever you see the semicolon, it means stop. So this is one little bit of code right here. We're making a variable called i, and we're going to give it a value of 0. We're also going to say i is less than max. So we have an expression here. Then we want to say i, and we're going to increment. So what's really going on here is we're making a variable or a starting position. We're telling the loop when to stop. The i should be less than the maximum. And we're telling it what direction we want to go, positive or negative. We could have very easily said decrement. In other words, going from 100 to 0. But in this case, we want to go from 0 to 100. Or whatever maximum we give it. So while this whole expression is true, run this code. All right, we'll say i equals, and let's just display that variable. Save and run this. And let's enter a max. We're going to do it 10 times. So from 0 to 9, where'd the 0 come from? Well, it's right here, i equals 0. We could have very easily said i equals 1. And let's actually do that. And we have our 1 through 9. If you're wondering why we didn't get that number 10, it's because we want that to be less. We can say less than or equal to, and it'll print out our 10. Ta-da! Typically, you'll see a for loop starting with a 0 and less than your max. And there's a reason for that. It's because you'll typically work with a for loop when you're working with what's called a list or with an array. Let's go ahead and make an array because we haven't covered lists. I'm going to say int. We want uh, four of these. Call it ages. And we've just got four different ages in there. Now let's make a for loop to kind of iterate through these things. And then we want i is less than ages that size. Oops. And then we want to increment as we go. So really what we're doing here is we're saying create a variable called i equals 0. We want to do this as long as i is less than our array size. In this case, it's going to be 4. And then each time we're going to increment. So we're going from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. All right, let's go ahead and pump this out.
and we're going to say Q info. And I want to say looks pretty nasty and we've got some warnings going on here but this should work notice how we're changing the sign this and we've got integers of different signs and things like that we can safely ignore those warnings for now but let's go ahead and run this it's in our max 10 and you can see it did what we expected it to for this loop this loop we really didn't need to enter anything but uh, we have our numbers what is it 44 56 32 16 so it's starting at the zero position. Remember, arrays are zero base. So we want to start at the zero index. That's typically why you'll see a for loop start at zero, because you're typically going to work with an array or something of that nature where the starting point is zero. Pretty easy to understand, but pretty darn powerful once you get into it. I hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. That was a preview of one of the videos out in the Cute Core for Beginners with C++ course I have out on Udemy. I am going to be making an intermediate in advance, and then we're going to start working on GUI technologies. For example, showing buttons, lists, tree views, you name it, and then moving on to things like QML. Um, the reason why I've restarted this whole thing is if you're watching these videos out on YouTube, they are a little old. Um, this one was done in 2011. And the technology has changed over time. So because the technology has changed, some of these videos, as good as they are, really don't line up with the current cute technology stack anymore. So I wanted to start from scratch. I hope to see you out on Udemy and also in the Voidrums Facebook group. See you there.